بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق أجمعين وخاتم الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا ونبينا وحبيبنا وحبيب إله العالمين الرسول الأمجد المحمود الأحمد أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد اللهم صل على محمد وعلى محمد وعجل فرجهم أظم الله أجورنا وأجوركم for the sad demise of Imam al-Sadiq صلوات الله وسلامه عليه He is the sixth Imam among Imams of Ahl al-Bayt سلام الله عليهم He is son of Imam al-Baqir and son Imam al-Baqir son of Imam Zain al-Abidin Zain al-Abidin son of Imam Hussain عليه السلام son of Amir al-Mu'minin عليه السلام Imam al-Sadiq was born in, in the year 83 uh, of Hijra, uh, and uh, he lived till uh, the year 148. So his time was end of uh, Umayyad uh, Caliphate or dynasty and beginning of Abbasid uh, dynasty uh, because the Umayyad dynasty um, fall at the year uh, 132. So he and Imam al-Baqir, sallallahu alayhi wa had some time to propagate the sunnah of the Prophet and the Sharia uh, with some freedom. Uh, actually, as we know from the history, the hadith of the Holy Prophet, the sunnah of the Prophet was burned first by Abu Bakr, then by Umar, and then later on was banned by Muawiyah and Bani Umayyah with the excuse that it should not be mixed with the Quran. So all ahadith of the Holy Prophet were burned, and especially Umar used to punish the uh, Sahaba who go and uh, they say uh, about uh, ahadith of the Holy Prophet, that I hear the Prophet وسلم, saying so and so, he punish him. He say only talk about Quran, nothing else. Uh, so when the time passed, um, all the hadith of the Holy Prophet were lost from uh, hand of the Muslims. Uh, that is why it, it used to say that only 800 authentic hadith remained um, at the time of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz and, and after that. Uh, the, the Imams were not allowed to propagate and also what they said, to say what Imam Ali alayhi salam said, and what Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein, Imam Zain al Abidin said, also were banned by the governments. So what we have got from um, uh, heritage like Nahjul Balagh, like Sahifa Sajadiyya, that was not an easy job uh, kept by the authors who wrote it and prepared it, and um, uh, we got a chance to uh, have that uh, in our hand uh, today. Uh, but thousands of ahadith, um, you know, were not uh, available. Uh, but at the time of Imam al-Baqir started, and then Imam al-Sadiq, they established the greatest Islamic uh, university, or you call it Islamic seminary, in Kufa and Medina. Imam al-Sadiq was at the time in Kufa, and he had, uh, as Hassan ibn Washa says, had 900 scholars were studying under him. All they said, I heard Ja'far ibn Muhammad ibn Sadiq saying so and so on different issues of, on principles of faith or on fiqh or on tafsir Quran or akhlaq or other subjects, you know. And when he moved later on to uh, Medina, he had his great university in Medina, and um, 4,000 scholars were graduated from um, his university. I mean, that is from all Muslim sects, you know. that beginning, there was no sect as it is, but different groups and ideas were there. But his students were not all, let us say, Shias in the special term, but even Sunnis were there. Malik, uh, who is uh, leader of the Maliki sect, was one of the students of Imam Abu Hanifa, 
um, uh, leader of the Hanafi sect, he said, Lawla sanatan lahalaka al-Nu'man. If that two years that I studied under Imam al-Sadiq were not there, I would have perished, you know, because he had no ahadith. He said the number of a true sahih hadith is very limited. And if they have to give fatwa, they don't know what to give fatwa. So they used to ask Imam al-Sadiq or sometimes ask his um, uh, students who are very um, well uh, educated with high, high knowledge. Um, and then, um, you know, Shafi'i took from Malik and uh, Ahmad ibn Hanbal took from Shafi'i. So actually, as Ibn Abi al-Hadid al-Mu'tazili said, all the four Muslim sects took their knowledge from Imam al-Sadiq. Of course, what they have taken it from Imam al-Sadiq is the, the genuine and true Sharia, but what they have added in their own ideas or took it from other people, uh, naturally that is not representing the true teachings of Islam, teachings of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu uh, Alaihi Wasallam. So Imam al-Sadiq, uh, to tell the people um, uh, that what I say is uh, actually a saying of the Prophet, sometimes he used to give the uh, narrators of the, uh, the hadith, the Senate, he said, what I say is what I heard from my father, Imam al-Baqir, he took it from his father, uh, Ali ibn al-Hussein, Zain al-Abidin, Zain al-Abidin took it from his father, and Imam Hussein, alayhi salam, Imam Hussein from Imam Hassan, Imam Hassan from Amir al-Mu'minin, Amir al-Mu'minin from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi Rasulullah from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. <coughs> so he said, what I tell you, it is that uh, the narrations, all of it have this uh, narrators of, of hadith, you know. And uh, um, he uh, had many students who are specialized on different sciences, you know. One is in the Arabic language, other one in fiqh, other one in Quran, other one in kalam or principles of faith or argument, others like uh, Jabir ibn Hayyan in chemistry and other uh, sciences. So he had many um, scholars uh, graduated from his university on specialized on different fields of uh, Islamic uh, sciences. Um, he used to encourage Aban ibn Taghlub that Ujlus fil Masjid waftin Ujl, Ujlus fi Masjid al Madina waftin nas fa inni uhibbu an ara fi Shi'ati mithlak. Sit in the mosque of Medina and give fatwa to the people. The people, not all of them can reach Imam Sadiq. Sometimes the government will not allow. So he said, You sit in the mosque like any alim, any scholar, you sit and give fatwa to the people because I love to see among my Shias some who are uh, very knowledgeable like you. Um, Aban ibn Taghlub um, used to say that he remembers 30,000, 30,000 hadith from Imam Sadiq alayhi salam. So that is um, uh, about um, the University of Imam al-Sadiq and what we have from a hadith till today. I mean, actually at that time, all a hadith of Imam al-Sadiq were gathered by his companions. Uh, they became 400 uh, books, or let us say booklets. Uh, and those 400 books were later on uh, gathered in uh, voluminous books, the, the four uh, books that we have, like Kitab al-Kafi, for Kulaini and Al-Istabsar and Tahdeeb for Al-Tusi and Man La Yahdharu Al-Faqih. These are the four main books we have. They gathered uh, the 400, uh, let us say, booklets or chapters on each uh, issue which is written in them. Uh, well, some of the books written naturally in the history was burned and destroyed, uh, like when they attacked uh, the house of Sheikh Tusi in Baghdad. Um, then they burned his library, uh, and he had about 30,000 manuscripts, all were, were burned, and he ran uh, away from that uh, and came to Najaf and established the Hawza Almiya of Najaf. Uh, 
uh, or then the Fatimid ruled uh, Egypt. Uh, they gathered in the uh, library there uh, tens of thousands of books, but when Salahuddin al Ayyubi attacked them and killed them, he burned all those books uh, and threw some of them in the Nile River, uh, and some of them were burned um, to uh, make bread um, by, by that fire, you know, the uh, manuscripts and the, all the books. Well, it is a big crime done by him, but you know, that is the uh, history, unfortunately, is very um, uh, annoying, you know. So, uh, thousands of books and hadith has gone, but it's still what we have already and what our ulama gathered, you know, we have a great number of books. Imam Sadiq, sallamullah alayhi, had um, many points to stress among the in the in the mind of the uh, people. First of all, he used to stress about belief in Imam Al Mahdi, sallamullah alayhi, ajalullah taala faraja. Though Imam Al Mahdi was not born naturally at that time, you know, because he's the twelfth Imam. Uh, but still, from that time, as we know, there are uh, hundreds of hadith from the Holy Prophet وسلم, about Imam al Mahdi, from Amir al Mu'mineen, from Imam Hassan, Imam Hussein. Each Imam had many traditions mentioning about Imam al Mahdi. That the 12th Imam is the Imam al Mahdi, and he will go in occultation and uh, he will reappear at the end of the time and will fill the earth with justice and equity after being filled with injustice and tyranny. So Imam al-Sadiq, salamullah alayhi, used to stress that point um, among the mind of the people. Um, sometimes, you know, he used to say that his occultation is for um, uh, some um, wisdom knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, why we don't know, Allah knows. It, it will be the reason for his occultation, the reason will be known when he reappear. Uh, um, so he said, the owner of this affair, affair of the government and filling the earth with justice, there is occultation, it is necessary. In that, anyone wrongdoer will doubt about him. So the real believer, the real mu'minin, will not doubt. They said, okay, he is the 12th imam, and we believe in his existence and his occultation. Those who are mubtalin in the wrong um, direction, then they will doubt about it. So uh, the person, the companion, Abdullah ibn al-Fadl al-Hashimi, asked why um, that happens. Uh, Imam told him, لَأَمْرٍ لَا يُؤْذَنُ لِي فِي كَشْفِهِ لَكُمْ For a reason that it is not, I am not allowed to tell you about it. Then he said, what is the uh, reason behind it? فَمَا وَجُوا الْحَكْمَ فِي غَيْبَتِهِ Imam said, the reason or the um, rational uh, about his occultation, وَجُوا الْحَكْمَ فِي غَيْبَاتِ مَنْ تَقَدَّمَهُ مِنْ حُجْرِ The same thing, why? Other um, uh, divine evidences of Allah have um, were not known, like Al Khidr, for example. Uh, he was not known, but the Prophet Musa, alayhi salam, um, Allah directed him and he knew him. And then when he um, did three things which were not known why he did, that is, uh, he, he was riding a, a small uh, ship and then he made a hall in it. Uh, then he said, why you made a hall? This is for poor people. He did not reply him. He said, you should not ask me. And then uh, later on, he uh, found a boy and he, he killed him. And later on, he asked uh, help from the people of the village. They refused to give them food. Still, he built a wall for one of the houses. Uh, so Prophet Musa was not aware, was puzzled why you do this. Then. Uh, Al Khadr told him the reason. He said that a small ship or boat, um, I made a hall in order uh, to make it not fit for usage because there is a tyrant 
ruler uh, who want to take all the um, boats from the people. And this is for a poor and needy people. So if the, uh, the uh, king will come and they will see that this is not suitable, we'll leave it for them. They can repair it, not a problem. And the boy, I killed him because he was very bad and uh, he was uh, controlling his parents and maybe his parents will be misled by him. So they killed him. And that wall was uh, for uh, an orphans and there was a treasure below it. So Almighty Allah wanted the wall to be there, not to be destroyed. So till those orphans uh, become adult and then they can take their treasure left to them by their father. So uh, even the Prophet uh, Musa, or Prophet Moses, peace be upon him, did not know why uh, Al Khadr did that. Uh, but later on, uh, it was shown, then he found, well, all uh, is uh, rational. So Imam is saying, um, telling this, you know, as we didn't know the reason why Al Khadr did that, um, so uh, he knew it after they separate from each other. So that is why uh, the secret will not be uh, evident till uh, Imam uh, will reappear. Uh, so then he, Imam, uh, الله, insisting to uh, his companion, Inna hadha al-amr amru min Allah. This affair is an affair from Allah, is order from Allah. Wa sirrun min sirrillah. It is a secret from the secrets of Allah. Wa ghaybun min ghaybillah. It is an something unseen from whatever unseen uh, done by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And if we know that Almighty Allah is Hakim, is wise, then we know all what he do has a reason and a wisdom and rational, though we don't know why and how it happens. So we have to surrender to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And about a hadith, you see the Imam al-Sadiq and other Imams, you know, actually there are five categories of hadith uh, uh, mentioning about reason why Imam al-Mahdi is in occultation uh, and some of them they show some of the reasons of this is not contradicting the secret secret may be one which was not said but other reason was said by the Imams um, so the people will get little certainty, little assurance not all have a strong Iman, a strong faith, they accept um, uh, what Allah uh, has done, but they need to know something about the reason. So the Imams um, uh, said that, you know, as there is a hadith from Imam al Ridha, uh, he said, um, I will, um, it looks as I see the Shia, Kani bil Shia, when they uh, lose the fourth one from my offspring. You know, Imam al Ridha is the eighth one, Imam al Mahdi the twelfth one. Uh, so um, they um, look for him and they don't find him. The companion is asking why. Uh, he said because the imam will go in occultation, will not be seen by them. So the companion asked why Imam Rida al-Islam said uh, so that there will be no bay'a uh, for, of Imam al-Mahdi to any one of the tyrant rulers, you know. لِأَلَّا يَكُونَ لِأَحَدْ فِي عُنُقِ بَيْعَةً إِذَا قَامَ بِالسَّيْفِ When he stand to uh, fill the earth, by, stand by sword, let us say, uh, to clean the earth from tyranny and injustice. So if he would have been alive, then all the tyrant rulers of Bani al-Abbas or Ottomans or others or the kings and all they, uh, either he do bay'at to them or will be killed. So Imam said, so there will be Allah put him in occultation, so there is no bay'ah to any tyrant ruler. And that is one uh, uh, of the hadith. Uh, second hadith from Imam al-Sadiq alayhi salam, he said, Inna lil minna ghaybe yatulu amaduha. For the uh, Imam al-Qa'im, uh, there is uh, occultation which will be very long. Uh, the companion asking him why, uh, because Imam said Allah wanted to have 
uh, to happen to him what happened to other prophets before him when they have gone into um, a type of uh, occultation. Um, that is the Holy Quran saying, لَتَرْكَبُنَّ طَبَقًا عَنْ طَبَقْ in Surah Al-Inshikaq, Ayah 9, um, which means Imam saying, Sunan man kana qablikum. The same, what happened to the uh, followers of prophets before you will happen to you. Uh, and the third type of a hadith, also from Imam al-Sadiq, uh, he said um, the uh, Imam al-Mahdi will be in occultation. They asked why. He said, يَخَافُ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ He is afraid to be uh, slaughtered, to be killed by the tyrant rulers. The fourth hadith is very uh, interesting hadith. Uh, Ibrahim al-Karhi, and this hadith is in uh, the book Kamal al-Din by Shaykh al-Saduq. Uh, Ibrahim al-Karhi said to Imam al-Sadiq uh, that wasn't Imam Ali السلام, very strong in faith and to obey what Allah wants. Imam said yes. He said but in that case why the people uh, they could rule and he did not fight with them uh, they usurped his right with Khilafat and attacked his house, as we know. So he's referring to that, and why Imam Ali did not fight with them when he was very strong and he is not afraid. Imam said here there was an ayah in the Holy Quran that prevented him from fighting with them. The companion asked, What ayah is that? Imam said, in ayah in Surah Al Fatih, ayah 25. لو تزيلوا لعذبنا الذين كفروا منهم عذابا أليما. If they were away or separated, then we would have punished the non-believers strong punishment. So who are if they go or being separated? So Imam is explaining the meaning. He said Allah Subhanahu wa Taala had some believers uh, in the loins of non-believers and some of the munafiqeen. So if Imam Ali would have killed the fathers, then those uh, sons and descendants who are believers, not like their fathers, they would not have um, come into being, you know. So Imam Ali did not kill the non-believers and the munafiqeen and in order to wait for the mu'minin, the believers to come, uh, in, in this life uh, till uh, all uh, the believers came and then at that time I mean let us say at the time of Khilafat Imam Ali he fought uh, with others so Imam said it is like that when all the good sincere honest believers will come out uh, from the loins of non-believers or munafiqeen then Imam al-Mahdi will reappear uh, and um, then uh, he uh, uh, will <coughs> fulfill the promise of Allah to fill the earth with justice and equity. Um, of course, Imam Ali السلام, mentioned this point um, that is in the Battle of Safin uh, in the last night called Laylatul Harir was a very, the, the war continued day and night, you know. So in the night, Imam Ali, when he used to strike anybody uh, of Ahl sham to kill them, he used to say, Allahu Akbar. So it was counted that he said uh, 500 times. Malik al Ashtar was also very brave. He also killed 500 persons. So Malik came to Imam Ali and told him, okay, I killed 500, you killed 500. Of, and so we are equal. Imam Ali salam told him, you kill without knowing the person. Hab hazard, you kill any, any enemy in front of you. I look to the enemy if in his descendants there is a believer, I will not kill him. And those who have no believers coming from their descendants, I kill them. So well, with his knowledge, Imam Ali alayhi salam, he knows from this one, there is son, grandson is a believer, will come or not, if not, then kill him otherwise, we'll leave him, though he's enemy, though he's fighting, supporting Muawiyah against Imam Ali, but still, he keep him for 
wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bring those out, you know. And the fifth type of hadith Imam al-Baqir said that Imam al-Mahdi will reappear when um, his uh, people will be gather 313 equal to number of the army of the Holy Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Badr. Uh, so he will come and change. Anyhow, these are the uh, uh, saying of the Imam uh, in this way. Uh, another thing, Imam uh, Sadiq alayhi salam, uh, he used to uh, encourage the people about ziyarat of Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Uh, we know ziyarat of Imam Hussein alayhi salam uh, is very important because Imam Hussein alayhi salam took a stand against tyranny and oppression of Bani Umayyah and to show to Muslims that they are not caliph represent the Holy Prophet. They are tyrant rulers and the people should not follow them. Uh, but the people naturally uh, didn't know about it and many were with Bani Umayyah. Uh, so Imam Hussein uh, took that great stand and he knew they will kill him and that will uh, divide right from wrong, you know, the truth uh, from the falsehood, very clear. But many Umayyah wanted to hide that as well. Imams always stressing, remember Imam Hussein, remember the tragedy of Karbala. And they said, uh, you go visit Imam Hussein, whoever visit Imam Hussein will go to paradise. Whoever weep for Imam Hussein, he will go to paradise. Whoever uh, make a majlis for uh, Imam Hussein will uh, get great thawab. Whoever wear a black dress for Imam Hussein has so much thawab and so on. Many a hadith uh, mentioned about that, stressing that the people should keep the memory of Imam Hussein alive because Islam will be alive if name of Imam Hussein remains alive. He represents the truth and others represent the falsehood. All the rulers, the kings, the um, governments who came who are away from Ahlul Bayt are on the wrong side. Uh, Imam Hussein is inheritor of the Holy Prophet, the Holy Prophet and other all prophets of Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who represent the right path while Yazid and Bani Umayyah and those who came after them represent the wrong path. Uh, those who fought like Nimrud and Pharaoh and others who fought with previous prophets and uh, also Bani Umayyah and others who fought with uh, Ahlul Bayt Salaam So the distinction between right and wrong is the uh, um, uh, Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Uh, so Imam in some of his hadith, he said none of the ladies of Bani Hashim, um, you know, had um, a surma, a kohol or uh, had a dress till uh, uh, and Mukhtar killed Ubaidullah bin Ziyad, that is five years after the tragedy of Karbala. So they were in uh, sorrow waiting then uh, Ibn Ziyad who killed Imam Hussein uh, to be uh, killed, you know. And sometimes Imam Sadiq said those who are well known in weeping are five. Adam, uh, peace be upon him, was weeping because he uh, uh, was brought down from paradise to earth. The second one, the prophet Jacob, Yaqub alayhi salam, he was weeping for uh, uh, loss of his son Yusuf for, because um, he d was not known where is he. Yusuf also was weeping for uh, being separated from his father. And then he said Fatima to Zahra salam alayhi, she was weeping for the tragedy of loss of uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Imam Zain al-Abideen he was weeping for his father Imam Hussein 40 years you know so he encouraging the people to remember that Imam Zain al-Abideen was weeping all his life uh, for the tragedy of Karbala or he used to say man anshada fil Husseini shayran whoever uh, uh, recite a poetry uh, about Imam Hussein and he cried, or one of the people cried, Allah will um, write for him paradise. 
or used to say لكلي شيء ثواب إلا الدمع فينا for everything there is a known reward except the uh, tears uh, which comes for remembering the uh, tragedies upon us that's there is you cannot count its reward it's only Allah will give that reward and you say Allah will give means Allah will give you paradise for that or in hadith من, من أحب الأعمال إلى الله تعالى زيارة قبر الحسين one of the best deeds for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is to visit the grave of Imam Hussein عليه السلام all you say إن البكاء والجزع مكروه للعبد في كل ما جزع ما خل البكاء والجزع على الحسين بن علي فإنه فيه مأجور to weep and show severe reaction against uh, I mean after uh, seeing any um, problem, tragedy, any loss of family is not recommended. Actually, some types of severe cases not allowed, say, but, so say, except for what happened to Imam Hussein alayhi salam. For that, you will be rewarded. So whatever you uh, weep, cry, and, and uh, show restlessness uh, for what happened in Karbala, uh, and what uh, Ahlul Bayt has faced, you will be rewarded for that. So that is, uh, that is okay. Uh, so you, you see how Imam uh, used to uh, uh, encourage the people uh, about uh, remembering Imam Hussein alayhi salam. Uh, well, um, Imam al-Sadiq, um, though he did not interfere in the politics because he know uh, the people will not uh, support him and are not sincere um, and meanwhile he wanted to uh, educate them about the true Islam and uh, keep the true Islam alive in, in uh, heart and mind of the people uh, that is why he opened his great university but still Mansur al-Tawaniqi um, tried many times to kill him and he used to call him from Medina to come to Baghdad and then uh, talk to him. But then Imam used to have dua and Allah um, saved him from uh, Mansur again, second time, three time, uh, till ultimately he, uh, Mansur al-Dawaniqi asked his ruler in, in Medina to put poison in food. Um, it was said maybe in a grape, a pot, and uh, was given to Imam al-Sadiq and then he felt um, effect of the poison. But even at that time, Imam Sadiq um, uh, wanted to uh, give a good example to people. First, he asked uh, about uh, his relatives to be gathered. And when they were gathered, he told them, إِنَّ شَفَاعَتَنَا لَا تَنَالُ مُسْتَخِفًّا بِالصَّلَاةِ our intercession in the day of judgment will reach not the one who takes the prayer easy and is not careful about his prayer. So, so much stressing about his prayer. Secondly, he asked uh, to give money, donation to many of his relatives. Uh, some of them were his enemy as well, and sometimes tried to kill him. But still, he said, okay, uh, I have to have Salat al-Arham and uh, keep a good relation with my relatives. Even if they are bad with me, I should not be bad. So uh, he asked them to give them uh, some uh, money for that. One of his servants told him, how do you give this money to those people? He said, I am following what Allah said, وَالَّذِينَ يَصِلُونَ مَا أَمَرَ اللَّهُ بِهِ أَنْ يُوصَلْ وَيَخْشَوْنَ رَبَّهُمْ وَيَخَافُونَ سُوَى الْعَذَابِ Those who keep a good relation to uh, people whom Allah ordered in, in the relatives and they are afraid from the um, uh, questioning of Allah in the day of judgment. Uh, then he said, oh Allah created paradise and made it very uh, nice uh, uh, smell and the smell of paradise can be felt from a distance of 2000 years but whoever cut his relation with his relatives will not smell the uh, uh, paradise, you know. So um, the one who 
Haq for his parents or cut the relation for uh, Israel. And he knew that uh, Mansur might kill his vicegerent. So, uh, and this is what happened uh, because Mansur wrote uh, to uh, his ruler in, in Medina, the government in Medina, that see who is uh, the vicegerent of uh, uh, Imam al-Sadiq, kill him. So when he asked, they said Imam al-Sadiq uh, gave that the um, uh, vicegerent of me are five people. One of them is ruler of Medina himself. The second one, my wife. The third one, Abdullah al avta the fourth one, Mansur himself. And the fifth one, Imam Musa ibn Ja'far alayhi salam. Naturally, we know that the rulers and the Mansur, they are a tyrants, cannot be the Imam and vicegerent. But then he wrote it in such a way so that uh, Mansur cannot kill Imam Musa ibn Ja'far and uh, to be saved in that. Um, then when Imam was... Um, um, uh, you know, poisons increase and ultimately uh, his soul uh, was raised to heaven. The people carried his body to Baqi and was buried beside his father, Imam al-Baqir, and his grandfather, Imam Zain al-Abidin and Imam Hassan. Peace be upon them. There was a dome on their graves, but that was destroyed by the Wahhabis in the first attack and the second attack uh, in about 97 years ago. إنا لله وإنا إليه راجعون ولا حول ولا قوة إلا بالله العلي العظيم. Oh Allah, we ask you by Imam al-Sadiq and by the Holy Prophet Muhammad and Ahlul Bayt, salam Allah alayhim, to hasten reappearance of Imam al-Mahdi, عجل الله تعالى فرجا, in order to fill the earth with justice and equity after being filled with injustice and tyranny. Oh Allah, fulfill our needs by Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. O oh Allah, give healing to our patients. O oh Allah, increase our livelihood. O oh Allah, protect our sons and daughters from the evildoers. O oh Allah, uh, make us uh, continue on um, right faith and wilayat of Muhammad wa ala Muhammad till we die. O oh Allah, accept our good deeds and grant us shafa'at of Muhammad wa ala Muhammad in the day of judgment. O oh Allah, um, grant us to be with them in paradise in the high position. If go to, we, I request you to recite Surah Al-Fatiha for uh, the deceased people among our family, especially for ulama and shuhada. Qablaha salawat. Allahumma salli ala Muhammad wa ala Muhammad. Wa ajjil farajah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim.